Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I had an interesting moment there, of course, with the producer. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the ECL Elite Division. We are back with NHL Gamer Tuki here, joined, of course, joined, of course, by my broadcast partner in Mr. Sin for the win. Sin, we are back after kicking off the Winter 22 season this past Monday with some great games that we had there. And needless to say, I'm excited to be back here again today. A couple of interesting matchups. HV71, one of our newest clubs, gets their biggest challenge as they get to take on for Lunda. And a little bit later on, a battle of playoff implications. It is IQ taking on Uribra. Yeah, I mean, definitely going to be uh, some interesting matchups today. As you said, I mean, HV71, not the start that they wanted. And now to try to get out of the the small hole that they're in at the 0-2 start, you have to take on a team like Frelunda. And that is uh, going to be no easy task right here. But yeah, the second matchup, definitely IQ and Orderbro. I mean, two teams vying for playoff spots could actually, you know, theoretically be a matchup that we possibly see if they're able to get themselves up into the standings. Nonetheless, it's definitely going to be an interesting matchup, but both of these guys could either be fighting uh, for one of those potential playoff spots or just on the outside looking in with how this division is set up. Now, I mean, you mentioned it too, and of course we had our season preview uh, episode that was out. You can still catch that over on our YouTube channel, of course, but you know, you look at Verlunda, very much expected to be in a playoff spot in a championship, uh, you know, contending spot by the end of the regular season yep. for HV71, looking to prove some people wrong. And like, of course, you said the other two teams, hopefully, will find themselves in a playoff spot. Time will ultimately tell. Let's get you caught up, though. Take a look at the standings so far through the first real match day, if not, uh, you know, there were a couple of games yesterday, I believe, to equal things out. Indeed, you see there, H-Reds top of the board as defending champions on four games so far. And, of course, in as per usual, left-hand side of the bracket is where you want to be through this 30-game regular season that we have here. But, of course, as you can see, we have a long, long way to go. Yeah, absolutely. But Atred's getting off to the start that they want, and the goals and the goal differential is very good—a two to one ratio, exactly kind of what you want to see. Perhaps what you'd even expect from a defending it champion team, as you know, they were the ones who who shocked the. The esports world. I don't know how else to say it. They shocked the NHL esports world. They swept the who were Philadelphia. Now for Lunda in the finals here. So I can't wait to see those two teams go at it here in the regular season. But we're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that. But we do get to see it for Lunda today. They're off to a good start. Two and O, oh, and uh, definitely looking ready to compete with that uh, five to one goals for goals against differential. It does not paint a pretty picture for their opponent. HV71, you see, currently in 16th. Of course, if they were to finish the regular season in that spot, automatically relegated back down to our pro division. Seven goals against in two games. You're going up against one of the best offenses that competitive sixes esports has ever seen. We'll see what type of matchup we have today. Let's get you a look at the team lineups here. These are the guys, of course, that will be in action for both of these sides. For Fralunda, it is exactly who you would expect at this point. Playmaker, Potsloff, and Eki up top. Temu Loimu on defense. Captain Kape between the pipes and, of course, on the other side. Uh, for the new boys in HV71, again, they earned promotion from our pro division last season. Sin, they were the ones that that shocked the, that shocked the esports world as well, uh, in a way, maybe to a lesser extent. But they are the ones that relegated Yippy Vaskala in a seven-game series, knocking him out in five. Still absolutely incredible to have seen that happen. It is Rubitas, Demski, and Matalaiska up top. Zupe and Putaking on defense. Kofalainen between the pipes and as we get into talking about these of course we are uh i believe still waiting for a little bit more information to have our full head-to-head -head, uh screens at this point because hey two games to go off of isn't that much but we look back to last season for the battle of the centers here potslav had 60 points in 28 games still just an elite center in this situation here but we look at Demski. And sent captain of the team, somebody who's back in the elite division for the first time in a while. What can you tell us about Dembski heading into this matchup? Well, I 
it, it's very important to have a good center, uh, plain and simple, especially when you get to the elite division. Uh, face-offs, it, it becomes really a, a battle of territory and, you know, historically has been a pretty good. But yeah, you said it, the, the point values that he brings to the table. If you have a center who can play well, you know, in all in, – in, in every every zone here, win some faceoffs for you. That's that's important. If he could put up points as well, equally important. I mean, the last time he played in the ECL uh, was season eight with the uh, Bucketeers. He had twenty seven points in thirty games played. Now, which isn't too bad, but you're definitely going to need some better production if you want to go uh, farther in the ECL Elite around this time. Absolutely, again, but it is nice to have somebody with a little bit of experience in this division, and the only other guy on that HV71 uh, side of things who does is, of course, the left wing in Rubitas. You see the uh, the older player picture there, but previously with Feriastad back in ECL 11, so of course a season away, had 23 points in 26 games, but then dynamic scorer at the pro level, but... You look at that matchup, of course, if we look specifically at left wings, obviously they don't match up based off of how they are on the ice, but plea maker on the other side, we never know what to expect out of plea maker, Sin. I mean, it could be 80 points with 50 goals, it could be 30 goals, 70 assists, uh, he's incredibly dynamic and often unpredictable. Yeah, um, I think we could scroll through every single matchup here and say it's a tough matchup for the opposite. I mean, HD 71 is up against it right here. This is, you know, part of the best of the best. Uh... I mean, everywhere. Plea maker. Yeah, you said it. I mean, he's such a such a dynamic player. Uh, you don't know what you're going to get out of him because every single player on on the Ferlunda roster is just absolutely dangerous. We've seen him have remarkable years where he seemed like the best skater on the team, where he was whipping out whatever. I mean, he's gone between the legs for goals. He's he feels that when he gets on it, he he just starts just doing whatever he wants. And he, he continues to just be able to get away with it. And he. It's absolutely insane. I mean, really, you, you lose you lose your train of thought sometimes when watching what he can do. Just so controlled with the puck, L skates beautifully, and just knows how far he can push his build and still maintain possession. Just, you know, very, very good knowledge of game mechanics and uh, hockey IQ as well. Now, if I didn't know any better, I'd think you were talking about Eki as well. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly that's, I think that description fits pretty well. I won't ask you to to talk about Eki, but of course, uh, coming into the season off of one of his better elite seasons, had 82 points last season in a full 30 game season, was also voted the league's top forward. So. A lot to live up to. I mean, that direct comparison with the right wings, Mataliska, the first rookie for this HV71 lineup that we get to talk about here today, but a prolific point producer in pro. Had 46 points in 26 games with Sack Brothers last season. And then you move to the defense, Sin. And, I mean, Tamu and Loimu, granted, it was Tamu's first season uh, with this particular club last year, but certainly didn't look out of place. And Loimu uh, still very much has his reputation as one of the top defenders in elite lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... Again, what it's really going to come down to here is HV71 are going to need that complete team effort. You can't go into a matchup like this and rely on one guy, a couple guys. Uh, you're simply going to have to kind of try to throw what Ferlund is going to be able to throw at you, which is going to be a complete team effort. Every single guy um, on, on this roster is, is incredible. And it's to me, it says a lot that Ferlunda, despite being swept in the finals, did not make a single lineup change. We've seen teams like that. They have some kind of a bad showing. They maybe hit that panic button a little bit or people leave at zero changes to this for Lunda lineup. And that's that's confidence in themselves. That's confidence that they can improve in and something that HV71 is, is going to be up against here. Just the full team effort and and just how good they are coming at them in for Lunda. Let it be known that Sin was the first one to mention uh <laughs> for London's championship loss last season. Normally it's me. Normally I'm the one who's viewed as, uh, you know, being a little bit harsh on the one who happened to fall just short the season before. For HV71, that defense pairing, both elite level rookies. So I'm intrigued to see what happens there. And then for all we've talked about, Sin, in terms of what an uphill battle it is in terms of the direct comparison, Probably not a bigger uphill battle than in goal. Kofalainen, another Rookie of the Year candidate. Strong numbers in pro. Kape is coming off of one of the most ridiculous seasons I've ever seen any goalie have in an esports setting. He was last season's Goalie of the Year, rightfully so. A 28-0-2 record 
in the regular season, never lost in regulation. And when we talk about save percentages, we normally say, hey, anything above an 800 is looking pretty good. He had an 875. You're approaching that mythical 900 number if you were Kape last season. And on top of that, it's not just the fact that, oh, that, that save percentage was good. Because obviously, he had the numbers to back it up as well. Uh, four shutouts last year. I do believe he still has the all-time record under the NHL Gamer umbrella for uh, most shutouts as a goaltender. Of course, it was ECL 11 where he had 12 shutouts in 30 games as long ago as that seems already. So, again, needless to say, this is a massive, massive uphill battle for HV71 very early on in their season. Yes, um, and not only that, I mean, Kape just... It, it, it can be tough for a goaltender who probably doesn't face the same volume of shots as some of the other teams will face just because Verlunda has been so good at just controlling the play from start to finish. Sometimes you only face those high danger opportunities that slip through to still maintain the save percentage where it's at is phenomenal. I think it was the season before that, actually, if I'm not mistaken, where he had about what 14 shutouts or 12 shutouts in a season and just completely shattered the previous uh, single season shutout record. So... Yeah, you could you could look at any position here from Verlunda and just say this guy could perhaps be considered one of the best at his position, if not the best. And yeah, HV71 have their work cut out for them, and I cannot wait to see them uh, get started in this matchup. The official prediction number as it stands, 98% in favor of Verlunda for them to take game one, which again, puck drop will be in just a few moments here. Again, only our second match day, at least on broadcast, for our elite division. Excited to see, of course, how things play out. But yeah, needless to say, I mean, some tough matchups for HV71 to kick things off. Uh, hey, throw them up against H-Reds next. Why not? Let them get all the buzz sauce out of the way, and then maybe they might be able to get some consistency. But as we know, the problem with that, uh, there are very, very few teams, if any, that you could deem as an easy matchup uh, in the Elite Division. It is called the Elite Division for a reason. So again, we are just about ready to go for puck drop. As we get ready for this, of course, and I want to remind you that you can catch us here for Elite Division coverage every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 1945 CET. That's about, of course, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. You look at your clock right now if you're on the East Coast. Right now, every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And, of course, yesterday, if you joined us, we had a coverage of our Pro Division. You'll be able to catch that matchup or those matchups of the week, of course, uh, with our broadcast partner and one King Lime and Timo. So, so much going on. NHLGamer.com for all the information to, kind of, to try and keep track with everything that's going on in this constantly uh, evolving world bigger and better again our winter season here uh sin and that's the crazy thing about it this year this is only our winter season we'll of course have our spring season and then we'll crown a grand champion this year as well uh so much has changed it is a a sprint as much as it's a marathon and the good news is we're about ready to go so actually you get to look at the prize pool here as well and uh Yes, and we got some big money at stake this season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as we said, we, we you know, the landscape keeps evolving. Things keep getting bigger and better. And I believe it was our first our first uh, regular season broadcast, which was on Monday, actually uh, kind of shattered some of our records for most watched broadcasts. So we definitely got, got to give a shout out to all the viewers out there right now and everyone who's been following along, especially if you've been here since uh, more of the beginning here. We appreciate it. Again, for Lunda, HV71 coming up in just a matter of moments. One of those moments that you can just can't help but laugh off. It's a fun time here. I do want to shout out our tremendous sponsors who have stuck with us here because now seems like as good a time as any. Of course, you see their logos up above us. A big shout out to X-Bill. Of course, the returning Wilhelm. We thank them very, very much. Come on, Lacritzi. And of course, ST Hockey. And of course, you can find out more information about them by searching them, by going to NHLGamer.com. There's so much, of course, that you can do. And we thank our lovely sponsors for sticking with us and again, helping make that ridiculous prize pool that Sim was flexing about possible. So a big shout out to them. Goodness, and what a way to start, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's what we do here. We, oh. we we keep it suspenseful. It's not just the teams out there creating drama. We here at the production yeah. side will not be outdone. And uh, well, there you have it. Just just be it's... aware, we can pull the plug. 
Uh, it's 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 the producers always keeping us on our toes. Yeah. You never know. See, that's that's how you get the best out of sending us is you keep us anxious and not knowing what to expect. It's the best. You 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 back us into a corner, see what happens. We we come out swinging. Sin flexes too hard, and everything breaks down. We will get a look at the latest results around the league here. Unfortunately, we have a slight delay in the game time. Unfortunately, wouldn't be the first time. Of course, we look back to Monday with. Uh, with good old Feriestad, who weren't able to uh, have their starting goalie and McSavid play due to that lovely internet injury that he suffered. Uh, but we do get a look at the latest results again around the league. And of course, Sim, we talked about the matchup yesterday uh, with Atreds and Sawo playing off stream, uh, resulting, of course, in that double win for Atreds. And of course, talking about Monday's games, I mean, we did see that lovely, lovely two game split between Havu Gaming and Goons. Yeah, and. You know, Goons really, really came out and I think surprised a lot of people there um, like they did in the last season, like we kind of alluded to that they might be able to do in this season. Now, still a long way to go, but to take, you know, three points out of four against Havu like that is is really, really strong and, and exactly what they're going to need to continue to do throughout the course of this season here. And as we move on, we saw, you know, also um, Jure Garden and uh, YMCA took each other on and it was Again, really good series. I, I'm just looking through all these scores, and it's very few that are lopsided, which is kind of what we expect here in the elite division, and uh, kind of what we are going to probably see a lot of as the season continues. Absolutely. So again, we are just about ready to go for our first game of the day. At least uh, we do hope, of course, between between stuff uh, crashing on us or not, whatnot, and of course. Uh, having that slight delay with the teams getting matched up. But you take a look there, of course, exclamation point survey. You'll find the link in chat. You have an opportunity to walk away with a, a mythical, magical PS5. All you have to do is fill out that survey. Give us your thoughts. Help us improve or at least continue to improve. I mean, as close to perfection as we may be. Boy, that line hits a little bit different as it, uh, as it does the past five minutes compared to what it would have. But again, exclamation point survey in chat will give you a chance to walk away with a PS5 digital edition, of course. Again. Out. Ready to go. These two teams keeping us in suspense. The delay. The drama. It's killing me. Sin agree. Sin's through Sun yeah. Silence. Stun Silence right now, and there we go. We see the two teams on the ice. We finally reached our destination, everybody. It is HV71, the home team, of course, in the uh, blue and yellow, taking on Frolunda in the road white. And we'll see how this one works out. As Loima able to hold the puck here, trying to find a way to get out of the defensive zone. A little self pass out of the corner. See what they can do. Good four checking pressure, though, Sin, already from HV71. I wasn't sure if I'd see them kind of try to do that five man blue line trap, but I like that they're going to potentially be a little bit aggressive. As Tamu gets decked, it's going to be called the check from behind, and there will be a Forlunda power play just three minutes into the game. Yeah, definitely not the way you want to start off. You start off so good, you cannot let the idea of Ferlunda intimidate you. So I like them getting in on that four check right there. Temu led the way on the rush to gain that zone entry and then tried to protect the puck against the corner, takes the hit, draws the call. We're gonna see that Ferlunda power play get to work early. At defenseman Puta King on the off side, the off hand side is the one that takes the penalty as Playmaker is able to recover the puck here. Shot off the post, nearly caught Coppoline and leaning. <laughs> Rather lucky breaks then. You don't have to like to call things luck. A rather lucky break, though, for HV71 there. Yeah, the second he stepped kind of off that post is when the shot went free, and it was low on the ice and almost found its way to the back of the net. Off the draw, Potsloff tried to go across the ice. Couldn't quite find its intended target. Here's Pleamaker. Again, Eki on that far side. Here's Potsloff. They work it back to the point. Loimu, a little bit of trouble. Great effort there to take it away. One timer blocked down, and Dembski will have a chance to make something happen here. The defense is able to catch up, tries to cut into the middle, second chance, and a swing and a miss as that puck went to the far side of Cape, rocking those Carey Price-like all red pads. As it's for Lunda. Back in the attacking zone, Tamu 
Brings it down to the circle. We are back to five on five. Loimu fake slap shot. Gim will drop back down into the corner. Good low cycle here. Playmaker looking. Try to feed it back to the point. And again, here's Dembski. Has help with them this time, and Matalaiska. Tries to throw it on and does. Good kick save by Kopic. Manageable rebound for the defense in front. Playmaker for Eki. Eki tried to throw it into the middle. Rubitus is there. Again, back in this division. They tried the quick out. Zupa is there. Just not able to hold on to it. Said not a bad start, though, for HV71. No, definitely not. They're not looking severely outplayed. Obviously, there's some nice zone time for Lunda, but I like what HV71 did. They kept them mostly to the outside. They guarded the middle. They were, had nice pokes and uh, and stuff to prevent those pucks from getting to the middle. And even when they tried to kick it back out to the point, there were guys for HV71 right there. So they weren't over collapsing. They weren't being overly aggressive and they weren't being overly passive. Just really seeming to have, you know, a, a good systematic setup here early on to take on for Lunda, which is, again, you don't want to get into an early hole. I think they've handled the first half of this period very well. In the battle here of the two uh, Swedish representatives, and a shot from the point is in. Out of nowhere, Temu, really from the high slot, is able to bury one past Kofelainen, and it's for Lunda grabbing the lead halfway through the first period. That'll be Tamu's first goal of the season now, adding on to the three assists he's collected in his uh, first few games played, or first two games played, I should say. And that was just a great play, seemingly coming out of nowhere, but that's it's such a quick look that a lot of teams love to utilize. You sneak that opposite side defenseman down higher into the slot, and he gets the quick pass for the one time, catch the goalie off guard, beats him, and it's one nothing for Lunda. So a good start there again from the former champions. As Sin mentioned in our pregame, looking to get back towards the top of the mountain. Of course, known as Philadelphia last year before picking up that sponsorship this year. Quick out to Madaliska, a little bit off the mark. That will go down for icing. So we get a rough break for HV71 to give up that first goal. But Sin, I still like what they're doing. The willingness to let the puck go and try to chase it in the open areas. Yeah, and I like that they're really trying to get the, the stretch the game out a little bit with those passes, the slap pass from earlier. It's just big shot right there as it was kicked aside. I had to hold my breath a little bit for a second because the sec second goal right there it would have been bad. But yeah, I mean, you said it. Definitely still not looking out of place against this Belinda team. Good pressure here in the attacking zone. Ill-advised step up, though, by Zupa. And here's Pleamaker. Has an option. Tried to throw it into the middle. Broken up well by Puta King. Goes for that big sauce pass. A little bit off the mark, and Temu able to get back and force the icing. That was really close. That really was. Rubitus just didn't quite have enough gas in the tank. I would have liked to see that saucer pass on the other side of him. Let him chase towards it instead of having to go to the outside. So maybe just a tiny bit of miscalculated or maybe just, you know, a slight uh, adjustment needed on that aim. Nonetheless, again, I still like that HV71 is going for it. You cannot play too passive against this Ferlinda team because they will just eat you alive. There was ever a time to try some different strategies against the top team. Why not early on in the season? We have another offside call there. 5.39 remaining here in our opening period. Game number one of two between these two, of course, in the regular season. All 16 teams play each other at least once in our 30-game schedule as Playmaker. Not able to find a bit of space there. Again, a loose puck. Temu continue to play him with fire with just you know, a little bit of extra space there to work with, and it might have paid off. Loimo. Pick that one down up in the corner. Eki pass into the middle. There was a huge hit there. The player getting into the play a little bit late. Good pinch in. Tried to work it back to the point. And Sin sometimes. That's the issue with Verlunda and how quickly they move the puck. It can catch their own players off guard. They are back in the attacking zone here, though. Shot on. Good save by Kofelainen. Had a face off in the HV71 defensive zone. Yeah, and uh, for Lunda right now, just seems to want to be testing all the angles right now as they saw that the middle was a bit clogged up early on. They're going to start throwing uh, pucks on, see if they can catch the goalie over sliding. That shot not able to find its way through the traffic. Playmaker picks it up. A little bit of trouble there. Is it able to get away with this one? Now able to work it over. Jumped in by Rubitas. Picked right back up by Fralunda. Here, Zeki finds Playmaker. Has a step. Great job on the defense to recover. And a quick pass. Eki just not able to hit the inside of the post. Deflection in front. And Eki will find the back of the net on this one. Two to nothing for Lunda. Can't take advantage of the first chance, but the team leading scorer, rocking the golden helmet, is able to make it a two to nothing lead. 
Yeah, that's one of those uh, the puck don't lie situations right there. That was an excellent job. First of all, a great defensive skill stick by Zupa to break up the first uh, attempt from Pleamaker as he is trying to get in there alone. Loimu picked it up, quickly passed it over to Eki, who got the one-timer in an excellent position, just sailed wide. Back to the point, shot on, deflection, goal, just all happens within uh, just a few seconds there. And Ferlunda has a two-goal lead late in the first. Seven seconds to go, a chance for one more attack. Potsloff not able to hold on to it. And that should do it. A two to nothing lead for Ferlunda over HV71. Some decent moments there for the underdogs, but ultimately the attack of Ferlunda just a bit too much as we will get into the look there at the first goal from Tamu. They really started to set the tone there for the back half of that first period. Yeah, it really didn't. You can't really fault Kofalainen on, on either of those goals. One's a deflection right in front of him. The other one just kind of beats him. It's not like he was off his angle. You could maybe argue a little deeper in the crease, but that's more of the Euro style than anything else. And again, it's as, as harsh as it sounds. I mean, you look at the numbers and it, it, to me, it didn't feel like the, the game was that lopsided. We saw HV71, you know, able to kind of you know, get some of their chances, but most of them did come on the rush. They were never able to establish any zone time, and it doesn't matter how good it felt like you played or how how close you did keep it when you go down two to nothing against a team like Ferlunda. Your task at hand just gets that much more scary, and, you know, after that first initial 10 minutes or so, you kind of saw Ferlunda being able to wear them down and, and get the chances that they wanted or just adjust to the chances that weren't there and take other ones and they got the two goal lead because of it. So H371 is going to have to find a some some chance to get some uh, offensive pressure, at not just off of the rush right there. Because again, if you stretch the game out, well, guess what? Fralunda's also really good at their own rush plays. Indeed, they're right back in on the attack here. Shot on. A little bit wide. Throw right back on. Eki nearly got a piece of that one as well. Showing the willingness to throw these pucks on. Looking for those deflections in front. Get goals any way you can get him. His playmaker getting bullied out of the attacking zone. Here's Rubatus now. Again, back in the elite division. Throws it in front. Second chance. Madalaiska couldn't bury it. Another chance for Dembski. As Kape getting pressured here in the early stages of the second period. Sin, it's one thing to be able to actually pressure uh, the defense and the goal tending up for London. It's another to actually be able to get a goal. As again, that rush is quickly broken up. Turnover here, though. Dembski. Looking to throw that on. Madalaiska on the doorstep. Just couldn't sweep that one home. Kape was there to make the save again. Playmaker just a hair offside. Five minutes into this period, send chances for both teams. Yeah, and HP71, you know, able to get a little bit established, but uh, for Linda just doing an excellent job of getting to those loose pucks in both zones, but right there, especially in the defensive end. Um, you know, able to get to those loose pucks just a hair before HP71 was. <laughs> Doubled just wide by Playmaker there. Another good opportunity. Loose puck. Playmaker trying to hold on to that one in the corner. Potsloff who comes up with it. He loses it. Tamu able to keep it in. Thrown in front. Loose puck. Scramble in Kofalainen. Is able to find that one. And Sin, I mean, as much as we talked about some of the positives for HV in that opening frame. Pressure starting to get to them here and really starting to hem them into their own zone a bit more often. Definitely, and as good as they are, you know, playing against this in this matchup here, and our state getting a few more chances here in the second, they still need to find the back of the net, and they just haven't been able to do that. Excellent play there at the blue line uh, from from Linda to snuff that out. That being said, very nearly a turnover as Dembski uh, really cut off that uh, passing lane and almost had it going the other way. Playmaker still fighting for this one. Pudiking a little bit of trouble here and loses it. Playmaker tried to go to Eki, banked it off the side of the goal. Still a loose puck around the post. Playmaker slap shot deflected off of the pressure there. Potsloff still trying to hold it and again Kofalainen will be able to make the save and Sin you can kind of tell for Lunder having fun with this one trying different things yeah just being willing to see what works because to be honest again they're huge favorites in this game and they can kind of afford to do so. Absolutely can and uh, HV71 will try to break this out. They do get to that loose puck, but it's been very tough for them um, to be able to get that puck out just because, as we see an errant pass right there, definitely not going to help them out, but it's really because for Linda are able, are seemingly being able to predict where those loose pucks are going. And and I've, we've said that a lot through 
you know, every every iteration of this team, they've always seemed to be a team that is just absolutely tenacious and fierce on those loose pucks, able to somehow kind of predict where those bounces are going, get that first step or win the race or, you know, get some kind of a pickup around it or hinder the other person as they try to pick it up to make it more difficult. It's just all these little things add up. Eki to Loimu, not able to get that shot through the traffic. Pots off down low. Playmaker pumped off the puck, still loose. Loimu for Playmaker. Loimu again stopped by Kopalainen. Back to the point. Loimu's backhand intercepted. Here's Dembski. Couple of quick passes. Rubitas sauces one on. On the back of the goal there. Four for Alunda. They'll just take their time again, almost inviting the pressure at this point. Sin to be able to open up those lanes on a breakout. But Temu, a little bit of trouble there. Good pressure from Rubitas, and he does get it. Matalaiska looking, can't get the shot off. And again, you play with fire. Again, HV71, the majority of the lineup rookies. It could burn you. Temu, not able to hold on to that one. Rubitas gains the line only for a moment. Matalaiska's with it. Rubitas around the back, trying to look for his options. Gets railroaded off the puck. And again, Rubitas. Matalaiska to the point. Zupa, the shot deflects and goes all the way back into the HV defensive zone. Tough break there. Very tough break. That was not a bad look for them. Good job protecting the puck on the half walls. Then shot from the point. Just eyeing there was that loose puck. Kofa line and able to find it. It's in. I know, right? It, you, get <laughs> it in, keeps... you, you get the <laughs> puck into a situation like that. It's like you're almost just waiting, trying to track. Like, okay, who's going to pick that up? And yeah. will it be a goal? Yeah, this it's it's really starting to open up now. The back and forth action, no real neutral zone trap presence uh, as things are really opening up. It's becoming more of a rush game here, and not too sure who that favors. What a pass off the boards, though. It's Demski trying to throw it in front. Playmakers there, though. Final seven seconds of our second period. No goals to show for either side. Great poke check to shut down the attack, and that'll do it. So a two to nothing lead still intact. Four for Lunda. Heading into our third period of play as we'll get a look here at one of the rare saves that Kape has had to make in this one. I mean, hey, a more unfortunate bounce. Who knows? That one could have snuck in, but Kape doing what Kape does best. Yeah, he'll make most of the saves that come his way, and you can just see it right there in that, uh, that quick overhead view, the way he made the first save kind of slid almost with the puck, which is incredibly hard to do anyone who's played goaltender out there is to time your slides with the player movement or the puck movement and that's just really well done again it, it really for me it comes down to the details that for linda plays with which is what makes them such a good team obviously you know knowledge of mechanics is great you know the, th the thumb skills are great um but kind of understanding you know all the little things that it takes to win those battles get to those loose pucks maintain the possession and while hv71 did have a much better second period and they didn't allow a goal against they got a few more chances Chances here, still down by two on the scoreboard, and that it's it's going to be very very tough to overcome that two goal deficit here in the third. But I'm interested to see what they're going to try to throw it for Lunda to do that. There's Rubitas on an early attack, tried to get it back to the point. So if he's able to hold off a little bit of the pressure that he sustained at the opposing blue line space here for that's Tamu in on the pinch there, switches back with Potsla. Tamu throws it on, wanted that deflection in front again for Eki. We talked about that on Monday's season opening broadcast, just how much different things could play out. As I believe we have Puda King either just yeah. AFK yeah, or maybe some dead controller that. batteries. I thought it, yeah, I, I saw him freeze immediately and I got instant flashbacks to, uh, <laughs> well, uh, certain certain games that I've played in a, in a competitive setting. And uh, <laughs> you hate to see it. Um, when you're not involved, I guess it's kind of comical, but on this level, yeah, it does kind of stink to see right there. So we'll maybe uh, see if we can get an update onto that. But I'm assuming it's a controller disconnect as we didn't see him drop out. Um, didn't seem to be a connection issue, although it might at the same time. Let's see how it plays out. A, uh, a junior league staple, the right defender just disappearing on you. You never know what's going to happen. Let's see what we have here now off of this face-off and whether or not HV is at full capacity. And there we go. We Everyone are clap. back at full strength. <laughs> they tried that quick out, ill-advised. Again, for HV, so many rookies in this lineup as well. A, uh, a nice welcoming facing multiple times. Champions, that looked good. Deflects up and out of play, though. 
Yeah, the new new controller or the new uh, power pack for Putte King right there coming in handy. That was a great job from him picking it up off of the uh, boards, uh, dodging the, the the pressuring forward, getting to a good shooting location and looking for that deflection or just potentially sniping it. The shot had some power, but it hit a body and went out of play. Playmaker not able to hold on to that one. Gets it back from Potsloff though. Playmaker, it's perhaps teasing the Michigan. I was gonna again say just how uh, might things change? Of course, Eki always kind of with that strong net front presence. It could be that much more effective this year with the likes of Total Eclipse and of course, a big tipper as abilities. So HV back in possession here. Madalaiska tried to go to Puda King. Nowhere to go, completely stifled. Still some four checking pressure there from Pleamaker. He knocked it loose. Eki's able to pick it up. Pleamaker sends that one in. Potslop, not able to hold it. Loose puck, Eki. Offside is the call. 11.41 to play here in the third period. Yeah, nice reads coming out right there as uh, for Linda not afraid to kind of get aggressive for those pucks as you saw Eki do and as uh, just before that, I believe that was uh, Temu right there just because they know someone is going to be switching over to back them up right there. A lot of trust uh, it, it takes to make those plays. And that big hit in the corner, HV. Trying to get some sort of possession going. I mean, technically they're only down by two. Some might be able to view this as Verlunda playing with their food at this point. But regardless, I mean, hey, the result is the result. I don't really think they care too much about stats or the the goal differential. The only goal for Verlunda this season is to get back to the top of the mountain as a breakaway is broken up at the last second. Rubitus gets absolutely floored behind the attacking goal. Might have a chance for this puck here. Loimu in double team pressure. Rubitus able to come up with it. Tries to cut back. It's knocked back and around behind the goal. Madalyska trying to find some sort of space. Throws it on in a play that would uh, cause Sin to let out a gigantic sigh. That left defenseman was wide open at the point for a potential one-timer. Yeah, but I could feel some of the frustration from HV71 just to get the puck on net. They had it in the zone. They just simply couldn't get a chance off, and uh, that's, it's so tough, and that's been so little space again right there. They get it, trying to get a quick shot off. It's blocked. They're trying to, you know, work the puck around to the middle from the boards. There's just sticks and bodies going into them at every single angle. Just a fierce defensive effort from Perlunda as they put a shot on right there. Eki, another one. Kofa line in a couple of big saves. Five minutes to go here. In game number one, honestly, I, I'd love to ask Lightman. I don't know if he's hanging around in chat today, but uh, his play on Monday reminding me what we're seeing a flea maker here in terms of that creativity and the different looks that he's willing to uh, throw the opposition's defense uh, way throughout the course of a game. Is HV again trying to get on the board? We know Forlunda will play for their netminder. But that said, there was a penalty called, a trip and an HV power play as it will be Potslop taking a seat. So Verlunda gonna have to go on the kill without their center. And this is a big, big moment. Potslop has been huge for them. He's been winning so many faceoffs in this game. So if HV71 can set it up, get themselves a goal with the real time last minute and only a one goal deficit, it's extremely possible for them to get back in this game here. However, Kape just gonna opt to take the reset on that face off as the tie didn't go either way. I mean, Eki probably no stranger to taking draws with how prolific he is in pretty much every single game mode in NHL, how good he is. So pretty much uh, who you want to see in that face off dot. Off the draw, Madalaiska just not able to hold on to that huge hit. Totally dropping Eki there. Buda King stepping in, pressured. Eki able to win it back. And a penalty called here. We're going to four on four. HV It's going to be a slashing call against Puta King here. And Sin, unfortunately, uh, falling into the trap that a lot of defenders have, uh, you know, getting into a one-on-one -on -one defensive battle with Eki. Yeah, definitely not what we want to see happen, especially after a pinch. You can almost kind of hit that panic button a bit if you lose that puck because you, in any situation, it could be going back the other way and you're uh, technically caught out right there. And... Uh, just unfortunate for HV71. They get close, they have an opportunity, and then they get kind of put in a position where they lose the advantage that they had, and that's kind of been the story of this game so far. It's just for Linda able to... Oh, here we go, two-on-one. Two-on-one for Playmaker, and Eki pass across just off the mark. Tamu has options, goes to Eki down low. Eki 
Shovels one in front. Tamu stopped by Kofi Line. And on honestly, what's a more difficult save to make than you might expect if you get caught trying to go down to the butterfly? Yeah, absolutely. With one second left here in four and four, Falunda will have an abbreviated power play. And if they win this face off here, they could get it set up. Off a of face off. It is for Lunda. That shot just doesn't get through. That was a great look for Tamu. 20 seconds on this abbreviated power play. Here's Pleamaker. Just one man to beat. Can he do it? Making the move. Good job there by Azupa to stand tall. We are just about back to five on five. That pass off the mark. Dembski able to find Arubatas. A bit too much speed. Has to slow down. Dembski just not able to hold the line. 45 seconds to play here in regulation. There's been a fairly dominant performance here from Falunda looking to move to 3-0 on the season. Blocker save! And it's off of Eki getting waved off. And I hope for Copeland's sake that that one doesn't count. That would be incredibly unfortunate. I, I wonder if they're reviewing it for glove contact because it hit him in that upper body or perhaps it is goaltender contact that they are looking at. And it counts as a goal, so not enough to overturn it. Eki gets another one right there. Kind of a dagger in the heart of HV71 there. As time was ticking down, but there still was that chance to get back into it. Now, not so much. A three-goal deficit with 30 seconds left. This first game will be going to Ferlunda, but see what HV71 wants to do and uh, try to get some pressure to uh, perhaps get a goal. Eki now up to six goals in just three games played on the season. Again, the uh, defending forward of the year uh, as he was crowned last year by, uh, we'll call it a jury of his peers. Might be well on his way to securing that title yet again. Of course, fresh off of being claimed, uh, being crowned Finland's eSports uh, competitor of the year. And you can see why. Seven seconds here, shot blocked down. Dembski looking, shot glove save, Kape. Makes it look so easy. Plays it out, and that will do it. A commanding, dominating victory for Fralunda. 3-0, your final score. And yet another shutout for Kape. Sin, his second in just three games. Fralunda wasting no time getting the peak form to begin yeah. this new season. I was choosing my la my words very carefully in those last 30 seconds about HV71 wanting to push for that gold. Tried so hard not to say the word shutout or even think it. And uh, just on that, on that kind of topic right there, if you if you watch for Linda on that shot from the point, I counted at least four white jerseys going into a shot block animation from a shot that maybe wasn't too scary. But you can see how much they play for each other right there. They want that shutout from Kafe. They all went down to block that shot right there. And then Kape with a bit of flair, uh, threw it out with a few seconds left of time for HV71 to still get another chance off right there. So he was just like, I'll keep this going. He's not super concerned. See seemingly his team around him more concerned about his own shutout than he was. But credit where credit's due for Linda played a very complete game. But also HV71 didn't look too out of place. The numbers are pretty skewed in for Linda's favor. However, you can say that is maybe to be a bit expected just with this matchup right here. You can see the time on attack, you know, about... Eh, just under double. Um, Face-offs, 19 to 9. The shots in their favor. Obviously, HV7 with more hits, but that could go down to the less possession right there. Just a very, very solid game uh, from Ferlinda. Uh, but again, HV71, you know, they're right there. This is going to be a tough start to the season for them. Now 0-3 and, and really going to have to try to scratch and claw and throw everything at the wall to see if they can get... Uh, a, at least a point off of Ferlinda here. It's going to be no easy task. And no matter what, this is a rougher start to the season for HV71. But again, nothing's going to be easy here in the elite division. They made it here. They did knock out a former number one seed a few seasons ago in Yipivaskala. But as they're here, they you know going to have to find uh, those extra gears and the extra little bit uh, to be able to beat one of the top teams in Ferlunda. Absolutely. So with that said, of course, the second game between these two teams coming up in just a matter of moments. We're going to step away for a brief second here. As you get a word from our sponsors, we'll be right back. Game two for London HV71 coming right up. Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? 
ei voi tietää ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. And again, a big thank you to our sponsors, of course, not just Wilhelm and Kovalon Lakritsi, of course, Exville and ST Hockey as well. So, Sin, it's kind of a tough game for us to sit here and try to break down when it was that one-sided. And obviously, we could sit here and say, okay, for HV, what exactly do you have to do to get back into this one? But the problem is when, and I don't know this for sure, but what it looks like for Lunda's not exactly going 100% offensively and desperately trying to score those goals like they would be and, you know, maybe not trying a little bit more, you know, a little bit more creativity. Like if they're playing an Atreids, if they're playing a Havu, if they're playing a Goons, I think we see a different strategy out there. So for HV, I mean, that might be, you know, that might be just a little bit demoralizing to know that, okay, you had a couple of chances, but again, this this shows the difference between a team that has been a consistent title contender, a multiple-time champion, versus a club that is just earning their way into this elite division. I mean, for HV, they were a team that were projected to finish. Of course, that season preview video I mentioned earlier, which, again, you can still find on our YouTube channel. Uh, you know, it was one of those things. We had all of our captains kind of give their input anonymously on where they thought each team would finish. HV, of course, very much projected to finish right back in one of those relegation spots. And that's not overly, you know, that's not overly surprising, of course. You know, again, it's a team that's that's on the rise, and that gap between title contender and even just consistent playoff team is huge, let alone the gap between playoff team and those clubs that can, you know, really solidify their spot in this elite division. It is very, very difficult to stay in the elite division, let alone uh, be, you know, a playoff contender. Yeah, uh, there seems to be like tiers, you know, not just with the, the tiers of play in our divisions, but yeah, like once you make it to the elite, there almost seems to be a little bit of separation. You know, every every single hurdle that you want to be able to jump over, it's it, it's tough to get over. And while sometimes, you know, the standings are looking closer and closer every single uh kind of time we get to them it's still very tough you know you want to first get out of that relegation position then your next goal you want to get towards you know kind of that bubble team area you know on the cusp you know team like iq and stuff like that who have been you know so close ymca who have made it sometimes been close other times you know to be one of those uh kind of teams is is another hurdle and then to be a contender as you said the top of the mountain it's a it's a tough climb and there's a lot of you know different different kind of uh, humps to get over to get there but this is where it starts you have to get it here first of all hv71 earned their spot here now they're gonna you know get in their first taste of uh, an elite team against them and yeah it's gonna be pretty tough an exclamation point survey in chat your opportunity to be the winner of a brand new playstation 5 all you have to do is fill out that quick survey and give us your thoughts we want to hear from all of you on, of course, things that we could do better and how we can improve. And again, your reward for filling out that survey and taking a few moments of your time, you might just be the recipient of a brand new PS5. So make sure to check that out. We are ready to go for game number two, live from the greatest arena name in all of history. It's the Scandinavium for Forlunda HC. Yes, Zin, that is the real name of their arena that they play in. And one of those days, we're gonna have to go catch a game there at the Scandinavium. That makes me so happy. That's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> it is for Lunda, of course, in the home red. HV71 in the white. Again, keep your eye out for the golden helmets there. Eki has one of them representing their team's leading score. It is Rubitas on the other side. But here's Matalaiska now leading the way for HV. Tried to get it to Rubitas. Battled on in the corner. Not so much, actually. Temu was able to take that one away a little bit easier than we would have expected. Potsloff, Eki, just, or not Eki, excuse me, Plea Maker on the back end, just missing. Uh, no disrespect to Plea Maker, but it's almost at this point, it's like, oh, offensive chance around the net. It's probably Eki. Good 50-50 chance at the very least. Potsloff, that pass a little bit off the mark here. Zuppe, back for Pudikin. And HV looking to get their first goal against Verlunda after that 3-0 shutout victory in game number one. Zuppe looking, that shot blocked. Tremendous block as well by Potsloff, and again, he's down. Gotta love those new shot blocking animations. You don't see them that much, but they are gorgeous. And I will, I will take a bow for <laughs> mentioning to the devs at NHL 2K10 shot blocks. It's a beautiful thing to see. Let me tell you, as we have an offside call there. Sin, Sin had a flex. I had to have a flex of my own. Okay. 
Absolutely. And uh, I mean, <laughs> not a bad start to this game so far for Lunda. Kind of taking take take it a few more calculated risks or maybe even uncalculated right there as we almost saw them kind of getting caught on some two on ones here so maybe they are going to be pushing for some more goals nice slap pass play plea maker gets to it that was such an interesting shot from such a hot angle as again plea maker trying to go between the legs loimo it finds its way to plea maker i guarantee someone from Falunda is going to break out of michigan by the end of this game you can 100%. just tell that's yeah. just the yeah. mindset that they have heading into this they're just they're having fun at this stage as we just saw Tama go through the legs for uh, the really probably no reason, but a little bit of flair coming out now from Perlunda. They try that deflection goal. Here's Loimu. Again, it is always interesting to watch the top teams try to put on a little bit of a show. We like that creativity. I'm sure HV, you know, might take a bit of an exception to it, but at the end of the day, you know, it's up to the individual. It's up to the teams to decide how they want to move forward. Absolutely. If, if they're going to, you know, give you something like that, just uh, focus it's down and try, and try to take it to them. If they're going to take that extra second to, do, to try something like that, try to get a chance going the other way. Look at Tamu in on the rush, just pulling his way forward. Has it down low, tried the short side. Kofa Leiden's there. It's bouncing around, though. Eki, playmaker. Loimu just missed on that backhand from the high slot. Tamu, actually, excuse me, has Potsloff covering for him, as he often does. It's so confusing oftentimes between those two how often they switch as Eki banks one in off his own rebound for Lunda strikes first that's now seven goals on the season for Eki in less than four games what a start that's just absolutely fierce that that four check the pressure right there was ridiculous uh HU71 couldn't get it out and you saw them uh you saw them even trying to sneak someone out of the zone as they projected to be able to pass it through, but it would just continue to be blocked either by Potslav or by Loimu on that side. They get the puck on, and Eki in front of the net. Not what you want to see. Oh, goodness. That was that a looked great like it was save in. there. Potslav had all the time in the world in the slot. Not what you want to see as Eki tries to get that one to Playmaker. Just a suffocating amount of pressure on display by Ferlunda. Rubitas' pass off the mark. A nice and call. 428 remaining here in the first period. Yeah, perhaps uh, taking exception how close that last game was with the uh, the three goals that separated them. They didn't get that last one until about, you know, 30 seconds left either, and they seem to be hungry for them. All right, their credit to Kofa Line and so far, who's been very good between the pipes, and it's been so tough for HV71 to get that puck out. Looks like they are with a poke here. Let's see what they can do with it. Dembski has options. Dembski tried to take it all the way to the house. Kape was there to save the day. Zupe shot to flex. Plea maker, big stretch pass for Eki. Eki willing to just take his time to stay on the outside, but good defense by Pudeking in response. Right, Here's Potslaw for Eki. Plea maker shot. Kofa line in the save. We approach the final minute here in the first. Plea maker tries to go in front. Dembski's there. Plea maker again tried the snipe. Great block. Second chance. Puck still alive off the post. Playmaker just not able to get the angle. Stretch pass again off the mark. Rolando right back in on the attack. Eki shot, rebound well to the corner board. Pass in front, loose, and then the crease. Copa Leiden stands tall. An interesting start uh, to this game, an interesting finish to the end of the first period. It is a 1-0 lead regardless for Rolando. As we get a look there, the lovely elite edges. As he gets play. locked to the ice. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sid, it's funny, though, because obviously I want to hand it to you for your thoughts on that period. But also, uh, we did get a quick look at the teams in the locker room. And uh, needless to say, Elite Edges uh, already the meta in this game. There, there's always there's yeah. always a meta, isn't there? <laughs> kind of to be expected with uh when when you think about it i mean i wasn't too sure going in there's a lot of stuff magnetic i was thinking might be another big one or some of the puck battle ones but that being said europeans you know they love their uh their ability to skate with the puck change directions quickly they love it's a puck possession uh heavy game not as many bumps as you see in na so which is probably why you know magnetic kind of takes a back seat in this scenario but yeah i mean for Lunda was absolutely fierce in that period and it seemed like some of those long stretch passes from HV71 were more just desperations just to get it out of the zone for a second to breathe there. And when you're trying to survive against Verlunda, that is never a good sign. Again, they are right back in on the attack. HV, though, going back down the other way. Captain Dembski tries to get it into the attacking zone. 
Problem is, you got Loimu, you got Tamu back there. Oftentimes, Potslav is covering with his defenders. It's an incredibly strong defensive setup that not too many teams can crack. It's Tamu able to find Playmaker. Playmaker looking, shot blocked. Zupay able to get that one over to Rubitas, whose clear attempt doesn't go. Big shot and a big save off it's the blocker okay. there. Four coast line and huge hit. Space here down the other way, perhaps. Rubitas tried to sauce it through. No dice. And there's just nothing available. I, I'm, I'm even struggling to kind of see where any gaps are that HV71 can try to get a chance. That was maybe their best of the period right there, and it was just a sauce that someone's body got in the way because they're just rushing to every single lane just trying to clog it up uh with bodies to, to, to stop uh you know Kape from having to make one of those tough saves just going to try to keep them to the perimeter and, and as they get into the zone here just the immense pressure coming out so hard for them to maintain possession Ooh, loose puck after a block trickled towards goal Rolanda able to keep that one out it's going to be those type of dangerous plays that could pay off here's Eki weaving his way through the traffic plea maker not able to hold on to it, Rubitas. Why is it going to the open space? They try that quick out. Chance Zupe just couldn't sweep it. Past Kape, who was already down in the butterfly. Great look, but again, Sin, you even get past the defense, then you have to worry about Kape. Yeah, not just that. It seemed like even from behind, they got a stick in there to kind of disrupt the puck pickup for just a split second, which allowed Kape just be able to to make the save or even you know, for Zupin to not even get a clean shot off it's and even even when it seems like they get that step you know somehow for is able to break something up Zaki to Potsloff again they try that quick pass back to the point puck still loose bouncing around Zuppe able to find it for HV Zorubitas tries that quick out Madaliska's there hands it over to Dembski Dembski creates space scores on the backhand HV 71 have their breakthrough and we are tied. Dembski makes it happen. Sinny had a great play earlier, and this time he's able to find the back of the net. Yeah, the captain coming through clutch right there as a copy <laughs> kind of a... <laughs> oh, poor Eki got dumped on his head. Yeah, um, Kape was kind of uh, playing, the, playing the, uh, the, the forehand right there as he didn't slide all the way over to the backhand, and that's kind of what allowed Dembski to find that uh, corner. And huge goal from him. Again, as good as Ferlund has played, as dominant as they've been, they only scored one. It's now a tie game right here. So, a bit of extra life coming from HV1, as you can see him right here getting some zone time. Rubitas has it down low. Double team pressure. Dembski's there again, not able to hold it. Eki nearly got it to Playmaker. So, for seven minutes to play here in the second period, we are tied. HV71, again, have found their breakthrough. As that fan over the board finds their souvenir. So another big face-off here. Sin heading into play. Granted, only two games worth of information. Uh, Dembski had a really strong face-off winning percentage. Potsloff dominated in game one, but it's been much, much closer here in the second game. Yeah, it absolutely has. I mean, scoreboard, it's that's that's all that matters at the end of the day. And Falunda does have it in, but look at HV71. Able to get that, create a counterattack on the other way. We'll see what they can do with it. Nice try to sort of create some space for Putti King over there on the right-hand side, but Pleamaker read it like a book. You know, I often compare that, you know, the, the style in terms of the dump and chase, not to say that any of these guys are a, a, a big fan of FIFA, but so much of that game at a competitive scene, at least in the past, had been, oh, just send it into open space over the top, have somebody chase it down. Uh, you know, NHL-wise, obviously a little bit different with the, the rules of play, but we are seeing that a little bit more. You know, the great example, of course, is Afe with various dad. Just send it down and try to exploit that open space. Yeah, this is how HV it. had their breakthrough. Yeah, definitely. Area sauces can be can be very, very useful if you know where your uh, people are going to be right there. That being said, that one a uh, little bit off the mark and was able to be pounced upon by Ferlunda. That's the danger of it. You can send those area passes through, but you got to know that your teammate is going to be there for it because sometimes it can uh, get going back the other way very, very quickly. But yeah, I like to see a lot more of that coming out uh, here from the Euro scene on top of uh, we saw a lot more uh, dump and chases coming out in our matchups on Monday as well, which I do like to see. Absolutely, Eki was posted up in front, but the shot blocked down. Final minute, stretch pass here, Rubitas in, scores! HV71 have the lead in the final minute of the second period. Rubitas able to, able to beat Kape on the backhand. Sin, what's going on here? 
That was just a, a brilliant sauce pass up. That was a near perfect sauce pass up. And Rubitus made no mistake right there. Kape trying to flying poke check. Rubitus able to kind of stick to that backhand, avoid it, sneak that through between the stacked pads and the post there. And as I mentioned before, as Dominatus for Lunda has been in this game, they still only tallied one goal, and now HV71 have a two to one lead. Adelisco with the puck, maybe one more chance. Would have loved that one down. Plea maker for Fralunda looking one second, one timer's blocked. And who had this as a prediction? It will be HV71 carrying the two to one lead into the third period thanks to this goal from Rubitas. And just a really great job of them to not just uh, kind of roll over against this Fralunda team. Look, try to adjust, find what chances they could, and that's gonna be some of the counterattack rush plays and both of them were just sort of a partial break with that first one from Dembski able to find a tiny bit of space that one from Rubitus able to find a tiny bit of space and it was a a phenomenal saucer pass up that that saucer I, I believe it was from Putti King there unbelievable just perfectly placed and as close as you know the Ferlinda defense were to that so we're getting another look at that first goal that move from Dembski at the blue line near perfect right there somehow kind of uh dodged the poke as we're seeing the second one there just no real deke necessary just normal movement with that uh left stick right there gets him around and even though he gets taken out for his troubles able to put that one in the back of the net and now for lunda the team that's down in this one we're gonna see what they're able to do they've been playing well the whole time they've been getting great zone time good chances however now they have a deficit to overcome Let's see if they can turn it on here again they play with fire Anytime you don't take a team seriously, Pleamaker scores 29 seconds into the period from an awful angle, able to catch Kofalainen off guard. And needless to say, Sin, the entire outlook of this game just changed once again. Oh, yeah, that's got to be so deflating right there for HV71 just to start the new period. And he snipes it from there as a right handed shot as well. That's what's the crazier part about it to me is the right-handed shot from that angle. Wow, and somehow finds its way in. I couldn't quite tell if Kofalainen just kind of got off his angle or for just plain and simply picked the corner. Either way, that's a heartbreaking goal to have go in for HB71. We'll see what their response is going to be. The worst case scenario to say the least, and here come for Lunda once more. Lysk able to take that one away, head of steam down the other way. Tamu. Little knock it loose. Playmaker the good interception on the pass to the point. Here's Potzloff off of a big reach. Playmaker scores! Glove side again, top shelf. And for Lunda, two goals in under three minutes to regain the lead. It's three to two. Just a great response from Frelunda, and I think a little bit of frustration coming out from Zupe right there. The left defenseman tried to go over on Potzloff with his skill stick. Get putting himself slightly out of position and Potsloff was able to kind of do that L-skate uh, spin towards the middle and pass it to Pleamaker and that sort of space created without that defenseman there allowed Pleamaker to have the time to pick that corner, make that shot happen and they have now taken that lead right back less than five minutes into this third period. Here we go, HV71, let's see the response. And I said it was the worst case scenario to give up that tying goal less than 30 seconds in. I stand corrected. Worst case scenario now, they are trailing less than five minutes into the third period. They are in possession here. Dembski has one of the goals for his club. Slap shot goes wide. Zippe able to hold this one, throws it on. Again, another shot wide. Madaliska battling for it. And an odd angle shot for Rubitas, doesn't find a home. Eki able to find Pleamaker. He has a breakaway back pressure from Zupe, and he's able to recover. Sin, great job by the defender. Yeah, re really good. Uh, able to get his skill stick in there and sort of get the bubble going and body his way towards the middle just a little bit to, to get a stick on that. And even if he didn't, he completely cut off the angle for uh, Pleamaker there and would have made the job uh, easier on his goaltender. Um, to, to be able to make that save. But again, that's a scary moment to have Pleamaker, you know, seemingly having that half step and uh, coming in on your goaltender once again when you're already down by one. So HU71 now again having to claw their way back. And it's just, it's crazy. It seemed like HU71 worked the entire game to be able to get that lead. And Ferlunda just made it disappear in seemingly an instant. 
again for Lunda trying to get things going back down the other way. An offside call here. Heartbreaking moment. It's two points, even potentially an overtime point. Seemingly slipping through their fingers. We still have half a period to go. We'll see if HV can get that third goal to tie this one, but incredibly deflating to have that much hope disappear that quickly. Yeah, it definitely is right here. Is once again for Linda in on the attack, finding the middle. Eki, nice shot block coming out. They may have a two on one if they hurry, but opts for the wrong, shot. Slap shot. The wrong play by Puta King. Didn't expect Eki to pass that one back. Apologies for cutting you off there, Tamu. That shot doesn't get through. That was a tough break for Puta King. he had two options. Went for option three, and uh, that door was slammed shut. Yeah, the, the slap shot in that in that scenario. While it could have worked out, it was. Definitely less. That being said, they get one right there. Zupe. What a bounce out of nowhere. Another twist to the tail. We are tied at three. HV71 have the goal. Zupe is first of the season off of an incredible bounce. And I'm not even sure who that hit at the end of it. What was six minutes to go in the third? We're tied at three. Yeah, this game continues to take odd turns right there. What a keep in by Madaliska. Sends it back to the point. Looking for the deflection. Hits a body. I believe that was a Loimu back there. Perhaps Potsloth. Those colors can be tough, especially with these new indicators. I wish we had uh, an extra look at that last goal. Oof, interesting moment there. Zupe a little bit too close to his own goal for comfort. We're under four minutes to go. If you're HV at this point, you're playing for that, you're playing for that overtime point. Every point matters when you're a team that's projected to potentially be in one of our relegation spots. It could be the difference as Eki with the deflection. 2.49 to go. Verlunda regain the lead. It's 4-3. to three. My goodness, what a game this has been. Back and forth, back and forth, and it's pretty nuts. The old, I thought I was going to say the one thing that can make Eki even more dangerous is, is you know, a an ability to be able to tip things in now with the X factors making him big dipper he's even scarier around the net than he was before that's his uh, second one that's come not just from a deflection but at least around the net area it's just so scary right there is for Lynn to take that lead back HV 71 in desperation mode now trying to push back but you gotta watch out there's Potts loft ho drag drives and Kofa line and able to make the save and a timeout on the way Sin, what a heartbreaker. So, so close to that potential point. And again, the defense just can't hold up. But who knows? We still have a little bit of time to go here down the stretch. But just what an, you know, what an unbelievable game this has been in terms of the, the twists and turns that we've seen. Yeah, it, it, it really has, but there's no other way to say it. It's just been... Nothing, nothing expected. I, I don't know what else to say. Like, it's... It's been insane. I mean, HV71 took a lead after Forlunda was seemingly dominating them. Forlunda come back, HV71 come back, and it's just back and forth, back and forth, all the way to the end here. We have an offensive zone faceoff for Forlunda. HV71 are running out of time. 141 left in this third. They got to find one quick. Faceoff one by Potsloff. It's Playmaker down low. Might be looking for a hat trick here. Eki has four goals so far. In the games that we've seen, he's up to eight on the year. Here's Madaliska, final minute for HV to try and force overtime. Rubitus couldn't pick the corner. Good blocker save by Kape. Loimu with trouble. Eki able to find Playmaker, trying to work his way around the defender. Can't do so. Clock keeps going. 40 seconds to play here. See what happens. Another rush here for HV. Rubitus. Nowhere to go. Here's Loimu. All alone on the breakaway, and a big time save there off the blocker. Thought it may have clipped the bar. Still time for HV, 20 seconds to play here. It's playmaker for Loimu. HV just not able to get the possession that they needed. Here's Eki, playmaker with him. Eki off the spin, looking, tried to go back door, passes off the mark, one more chance. Here's Rubitas trying to hold, and he's offside with 4.9 to go. That was the right move to make right there, but unfortunately just lost the puck a little bit by the looks of it. Didn't have possession crossing the blue line. 
They could pull something out here, but they lose the draw, and that's where Potsloff has been able to come up so huge in this two-game set, is winning so many of those draws. Gets it done in a clutch moment right there, even though it was a neutral zone. There are plays you could do out of that neutral zone to be able to get one more shot with the amount of time left. That was on the clock for HV71. They aren't able to pull it off because of Potsloff's ability in the face-off circle. And for Lunda, will take this two-game set. Uh, in a perfect, I was going to say in a perfect fashion in, in, in that they picked up all the points, but that last game was anything but with how back and forth it was. And HV71 actually having a lead. And, but unfortunately for them, HV71, they were not able to sustain. And they drop and fall to 0-4 on the season. Alunda on the, on the flip side here, now a perfect 4-0 through their first four games. Uh, certainly a, a much higher entertainment value in that second game i think a lot of promise shown though for hv71 i think you can of course see that there is potential there i don't think we can uh, properly label this team automatic relegation fodder uh, i do think they have a decent amount of potential and certainly have it within themselves to maybe jump up into one of those uh, safety spots perhaps just outside of the playoffs but obviously it's in a long way to go this season no, absolutely. I mean, again, all things considered, yes, the time and attack was and shots were skewed in their favor. But at the end of the day, it's about the scoreboard in and, and where they had it. And, you know, take it being able to take that lead. They were never out of it. And I never felt like they were out of it. So, yes, falling to 0-4 is rough. But you got to consider the quality of the opponent that they just went up against here in Fralunda. And the fact of the matter is they kept the second game really close. It got a bit hectic at times, you know, but they're able to 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 find the offense when they needed it. Getting their counterattacks, they found some space, and that's not easy to do against Fralunda. And we saw other times, even when they were able to find some space, it was a great defensive skill set coming out from Temu or Loimu or even Potsloff or Eki covering back there. As we're getting a look at that, what the heck happened on that goal? Just a lot of uh, sticks and bodies knocking that puck, and it went through the five hole there. Just an insane game in that last one. You never know what was going to happen. And here we go. One more look. Eki again able to get that deflection off of the D to D one T. Unstoppable. There is nothing you can do about that as a goaltender. Absolutely not. I mean, well positioned to stop to slide perfectly in the middle of the net. That's just a, a a great positioning from Eki. And then that X factor coming into play with the big tipper, knocking that top corner. Just a pretty pretty much a perfect deflection right there. There's not much else to say about that. It's really one one of those goals, I have to be honest, in terms of my opinion on the gameplay, which, boy, I have a lot of them, and, you know, I'll, I keep most of them to myself. If, if deflection goals like that are going to be that effective, I am sure I speak for a lot of defensemen uh, when they say, you know, the tie-ups that are available in the game but don't often work or aren't as effective, boy, those could use a little bit of a bump up. Uh, I think there's going to yeah. be a lot of defenders hoping and praying for that to uh, happen over the course of, of this, uh, you know, 30-game season at some point because, as you mentioned, Eki is going to be an absolute menace this season with those deflections. Yeah, and especially as you're no longer really allowed to do those little bumps as you were in the middle of the slot. You know, every little bump that you do, you will most likely get an interference penalty because of it. So, yeah, with the uh, the A tie-ups being kind of more sporadic, and there's, again, only times where you can do that where you can actually be penalized. So, yeah, they're, you know, defensemen, you know, having to adjust to these new things, it's, it's going to be pretty tough. But, again, um, adjustments have to be made no matter, you know, the game is what it is. And uh, these are, you know, the best players in the world, and they always seemingly be able to find a way to make those adjustments and uh, things like that. That being said, again, great play by Ferlunda. Eki off to a hot start, as is his team. I mean, we set eight goals, two goal per game pace. Just watch again, out. <laughs> last season's forward of the year, and it's going to be very, very tough for someone to take that crown away from him. So those are the first two games of the day in the books. Again, a perfect 4-0 start for Ferlunda HC. HV71 down to 0-4 on the season we will be back after a, a brief intermission to get set up between the games we still have two more games to bring to you here this afternoon and uh, up next of course it is iq taking on urubro hockey and we'll see what those two teams can do both with playoff aspirations this season and as we've seen in these early games can go a long way in dictating how someone's season is going to play out so stick with us we'll be back in just a few minutes <laughs> 